Okay. Now, to make things print ready in the class, uh, you can go to the first day stuff from the digital art page and look at the supply list. And you'll see that for a midterm critique and for our final project, you'll want a mat. And I recommend pre-cut black mats. They're just a lot cheaper. The standard one we'll use for the midterm is just 11 by 14 inches on the outside with an eight by 10 window. Even though that window is actually seven and a half by nine and a half inches, it will say it's eight by 10. You want it to be black just so it can easily match. It's just a nice, clean, professional look. You can get them from all these places, Hobby Lobby, Jerry's, Azels, and Hurwicks. They're all in town. And then the paper you can print on, the one I recommend the most is the Epson Ultra Premium Matte Paper. Um, you can also do the Epson Premium Presentation Matte Paper. They're four star or five star, eight and a half by 11 inches. A pack will cost you around 16 to $20, right? Um, or if you want a glossy look, I don't recommend getting the glossy paper, but if you want kind of a photo glossy look, you can get the luster paper. The problem is it is tends to be a little bit more, more expensive, but that's up to you. My favorite, and I'll pass this around, is to print matte and then to have it under glass, right? And then you get the contrast and the, the gradient detail. And that's the, the best printing we can do. Okay, so now how do we actually make our stuff print ready? Well, we know we need it to be eight by 10, right? So if you remember, we go back to our PSD for our logo and we already set this one up perfectly. Because what did we do? We went to File, New, and we said we wanted the image to be uh, 8 by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch. So that's one way you can do it. You can always set up a new document and make it 8 inches wide if it's a portrait format, 10 inches tall, and 350 pixels per inch. RGB color, white, all the standards. By having that, you can bring anything in, especially a, a vector like the logos we just created. And then as it comes in, you can place it to where you think it would look best, just visually. It will even show you when it's when it's centered. You see that little magenta line that draws down the middle that shows you it's centered. Now, this is what you need to imagine. This is the eight by 10 piece of paper. This black space here is the mat around it, right? Now, if I actually grew the canvas size to what the printing paper was, which is eight and a half by 11 inches, and I make that extension color gray, you'll see that your printing paper is larger than what will show underneath your mat. Yep, question. A 350 pixels per inch. So 350 is our lab's printing resolution. 300 is professional. The reason we do 350 is just in case you want to do this when it comes time to print, just in case you want to make it a little bit bigger than you had it, you won't lose any quality. Okay, now I'm not gonna put the gray into my, into my print because that then would waste ink and print the gray. So instead, when it comes time to print, we say file print and we'll do this back on the printing computers and we'll use Photoshop to manage the colors and it's going to fit our image onto an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, right? And we'll want it at 100% and it will show us that it's eight by 10. Now here's the trick. That window in the mat is not actually eight by 10. It is actually nine and a half by seven and a half. So we're actually gonna print them at about 95% their original scale, just to make sure it's exactly what we like. Now, what about your other projects? So if you go back to your assignments, you have to choose from your exercises and your assignments thus far. We've done six assignments, two exercises. Uh, 
what has the best resolution. So if I go back to my cartoon jumble and I look at my PSD, you always want to go to your PSD file because that's your highest resolution, most finished image. And then I can go to image size. And I can see that this is 13 inches by 20 inches by 300. So how can I check if that's a good 8 by 10 by 350? Well, in image size, I uncheck resample. By unchecking resample, it means it will lock in those pixels no matter what. So then I'm going to put for height 10 inches. And then it's 10 by 6.6, .6, right, by 600. So if I put in 350, I can print this up to more than 11 by 17 inches by 350. So if I say OK, that doesn't actually change anything. It didn't change a single pixel. It just changed the rulers, right, because I didn't resample it. But now what I can do is I can go to the crop tool. And in the crop tool where it says ratio, I can say 7.5, so 7.5 by 9.5. And what that does is it gives me a crop tool that's exactly the space that would fit within a map, the true space. And I can move that around. You know, just like that. Then I can crop and hit return. And now when I do image size, and I say um, resample, because now I do want to change the pixels, I can make this exactly 7.5 by 9.5 by 350. And I say, OK. But do I want to overwrite my PSD, my original PSD, with those choices? No, I want to save this as a separate file. And before I save it for printing, I want to flatten it. So I go to Layer, Flatten Image. It's all about saving memory. Discard hidden layers. And then I'm going to say File, Save As, not a PSD, keep the same name but as a TIFF file. This is a new format, T-I-F-F. -F. And the shortcut for it is T-I-F at the end. This is what's called an archive format. And I want to save it to the desktop. Hit Save. And you always want LZW compression. Now I'm going to do that one more time so you can see it. You flatten your image. So let me go back in my history. So it's a PSD right now, I crop it, and I'm going to say layer flatten image, and I say file save as, and I'm going to keep the same name, but I'm going to make sure its format is TIFF. Now just to make it easier to organize, I actually add something to the name. So I keep the same name, but I put capital PR in front of it to show that this is made for printing. And then save that to the desktop. Now where it says image compression, this is what's amazing about TIFF. We want LZW image compression. It's a lossless compression format. It will not hurt your image at all, no matter how much you open it and close it. But it will save the memory um, pretty remarkably. And so this PR file, this is then what you're going to put into the class Dropbox. So you can find that under links, or you can always just go to dropbox.com and use the sign in, the username and the login that's under links to get here. Go to files, go to digital art class files, go to flatten TIFF files to print, and you'll see you all have a folder. And I have a folder, so I'm going to go to my folder. And then I'm simply going to drag and drop my print-ready file into this folder. And they'll upload pretty quickly. And these Dropbox folders are already on our print computers. So we'll print right from the Dropbox. And any changes we have to make to make them print well will be saved to the Dropbox. Okay, so just really quickly, uh, how do we do that with another assignment? 
So we did it with the cartoon jumble. What about one that's not, doesn't so easily fit within a rectangle, an eight by 10 rectangle, like your first assignment? Because some of your landscapes were quite long and large. So let's open that up. Remember, this was a big assignment. We made it at 350 pixels per inch at at least 11 by 14. And that was true of our creature as well. It was true of our creature scape as well. So now if I keep that same ratio for my crop tool, you'll notice it crops out a lot of my image. So if I keep that same ratio, seven and a half by nine and a half, and I hold down um, shift and option, I can grow it to fit the whole thing with white space around it. But if I hit return, look what happens. Let's see what's gonna happen. It's going to keep all of the stuff that I cropped out, right? And show it. So that's not a good way to do it. So how do we make it work? Well, first we flatten it. Layer flatten image. Okay, then we can use the crop tool. And then we can extend it to look good within that space. Remember the black of the screen is our mat. And so I can decide using option and shift as I move this crop preview, what looks best. And if I think that looks best, it's gonna fill in that background space with pure white. And then I can go to image size and I can resample and make this 7.5 by 9.5, it's really close anyway, by, 300, by 350. Okay, so now this is ready to print. It's at the right resolution, it's the right size, it's not gonna waste any memory. And I'm gonna say file, save as, PR in front for print ready to the desktop as a TIFF file. And I always want LZW compression. So now this is my second print ready. And then I'm going to go to Dropbox and drop this into my folder. Then I can close it. Remember, I'm not overwriting the old assignments. I'm making new ones. And then my third one should be my logo, right? So if I like this, I wanna have it cropped so it looks good within that logo. What's nice is if I flatten it, layer flatten image, and I move the crop like left to right, it gives me what are called these third lines. It helps me see where the focal points are that work. That looks good. So now I wanna print that. I say file save as, and I'm gonna call it PR Carl assignment six color logo. This is my third version maybe my fourth version, who knows, but I'm saving it as a TIFF that's flattened to the desktop with PR in front of it. There it is, I'm gonna mark it green. And then I load it right to my Dropbox. And then during lab hours or during the first hour of next class, as long as your stuff is ready in Dropbox, I can help you print it. What you need to do to be ready for the critique next class is to have your mats ready, right? And if you're buying your own paper, you're not buying it from the lab, have your paper ready. And if it's not Epson paper, I'm not putting it through our printers. <laughs> so, um, and I'll take IOUs if you need to use the lab paper. But the goal is for next class to everyone to have three samples printed. For digital honors, I just need you to pick one image that you've designed so far to make print ready so that people can see what you're up to. All right, that will do it for us. And then I'm gonna come around in the last you know minutes today, uh, answer any questions you have about making things print ready.